you ever wanted to visit ancient Rome? I don't know about you guys, but I've certainly thought about it while in quarantine. And you know what? I kind of have. Well, at least virtually. With SPQR, The Empire's Darkest Hour by Cybersites. Originally, the game was conceived as an interactive website where the entirety of ancient Rome was mapped out in static screenshots. And this was way back in 1995, so it suffered all of the downfalls of an image-heavy website of that era. Thankfully, you didn't have to worry about your phone bill or your dial-up modem speeds for long, as a year later, GT Interactive got a hold of the publishing rights for the CD-ROM. This even included some nice upgrades in the visuals and puzzles and other nice touches. But how does it handle as a game? The answer is pretty well, but there are some caveats. The idea is to prevent a vengeful figure named Calamitous from destroying Rome. There are five suspects who could have taken on this alter ego. Sybil, Xanthus, Verania, Lucius, and Gordian, and you have a year to figure out who it is. Sybil is a mystic who had predicted the whole affair, and given her low immigration status, she may stop at nothing to make sure they come true. Xanthus is a barbarian outsider reeling from the murder of his family by Roman troops. Verania, a priestess of the Vestal Virgins, has recently begun a relationship with Xanthus. Perhaps her passion for him is cause enough to turn on Rome. Lucius, a once prosperous and respected noble, now works as a private investigator looking into Sybil's prophecy, and Gordian, the chief city engineer, designed every inch of Rome and has become increasingly disillusioned by the corrupt bureaucracy it has become. It starts off with you playing as a nameless assistant to an inventor named Cornelius, and with his forays into some seriously out there contraptions, the authorities think that he is the calamitous everyone's talking about, and have therefore had him arrested. Now it's up to you to clear his name. You begin in the subterranean underground beneath Cornelius' workshop, tasked with fixing a contraption before you can enter. Once you do, you find that your boss has made plans to use the Navator, his latest invention, that allows you to virtually travel through the city over the course of the last year and snoop around for clues. This Navator is very prone to breaking down, so at certain times in the game you will be thrust back into the workshop and tasked with some of the more out there puzzles in the entire game to continue. Once you've entered the city, your first objective is to find the five scrolls of the main suspects, which all but one are hidden behind obtuse clues and strange puzzles. The first one is found conveniently enough on the floor in front of you when you first step into the city. And as time goes by, each of these scrolls will update with the events of the day, almost like a diary. And it is here, along with the local newspaper actor Diana, where clues are gleaned and plots unfold. Unless you want to make huge leaps in logic with the many clues and red herrings in the environment, you'll have to read everything. And there is a lot here. Thankfully, it's pretty compelling stuff. As you play, the year will pass by. Areas can be accessed at certain times, often marked with a Roman date nearby, and some events can be missed entirely. If you want to solve everything, the Navator has the ability to control the speed, though you cannot go backwards. Everything you come across won't really affect much, as you will choose your dissenter at the end of the year anyway. Choosing the correct culprit, however, is near impossible and down to sheer luck without the learned info. I found the city of Rome to be surprisingly small. It is apparently we created almost perfectly if you don't count the moving paintings and sliding puzzles scattered around. It is also empty. Despite the myriad of events described as happening around you, not one of them is actually depicted. There are no characters to talk to either, so the vibe is a very solitary one. Despite the recreation, it still feels like a museum. 
navigating the city is also a tad confusing, though it is helped measurably by not one, but two maps found on the Navitor. One details the buildings around you in respect to your own location, while the other is a standard map. This map also allows you to jump to spots where you've already been, which comes in very useful when you're completely lost. There is also a very useful compass, which helps set you off in the right direction too. If you pull down the doors behind these useful tools, you'll find shelves for your inventory. There are a number of items that can be collected and used in a later puzzle, though most of them are keys or act as keys to open doors or boxes. The real puzzles are more observational. The answer to them is usually represented nearby, but more often than not, these clues are incredibly obtuse. That is, unless you spot that one line in that one day in that one suspect's journal. Nearly all of the puzzles are incongruous to the setting and work rather strangely. Why would putting skulls on saucers open a locked box on the other side of the room? How does counting dolphins on a moving painting correspond to the code of an ancient safe? The main draw of the game is exploring the entire of the ancient city. It's incredibly immersive, even without its population. There's even a quick time virtual tour on the CD, so you can traverse the place in full panoramic mode. The quite why it's not featured in the actual game is anyone's guess. The original website on which the game is based is sadly long gone, but there is a fairly decent recreation of it which can be found in the links below. It is far more bare bones than a CD-ROM with an emphasis on storytelling, and that is by no means a bad thing, though when all of this is also incorporated into the CD-ROM, along with added mist style puzzles, you can understand which game is the preferred one to play. SPQR stands for Senatus Populus Romanus. Translated, that means the Senate and People of Rome. It's a bit of a strange title when you consider neither are represented visually, but their footprints left behind in their writings and their buildings make you understand how fitting a name that actually is. If you enjoy the atmosphere of mist, a whodunit mystery, and a somewhat apocryphal history of Rome with tons of necessary text, SPQR The Empire's Darkest Hour is for you. Okay guys, thanks for watching. If you fancy taking your own tour into ancient Rome, visit the link below to find out how to get it working on Windows 10. Remember to like, share and subscribe and ring that bell to keep you notified of when new videos are coming out. And with all that, I'll see you next time on The Collection Chamber.